All right, so I dug through my components, and I have darn near everything I need for this save for some .05 capacitors. I need to put an order together and just order like a thousand of those, because I use them all the time. However, I do have all the electrolytics I need. These are my last two 20 microfarad 450 volters, which is fantastic. Um, tricky part with that might be the number of connections actually leading there. Um, I'm probably going to have to cut the can in half and stuff these into that in order to make this a little easier because there's not enough depth for me to try putting them in another location unfortunately so I'll have to go the uh, slightly more barbaric uh, way to get that to work in the meantime we can start going through and replacing these regular guys now, I have tried and looked for a schematic, and unfortunately, this particular model is not covered anywhere on the internet. So, I am on my own here. And there are a few replaced capacitors, but the vast majority of them are original. And being that this is a super high-end set, and most of the components were already .05s for all the coupling caps, I think it's fair to say that nothing I do is probably going to prevent this thing from functioning. So, we're going to go ahead and just start replacing these components one by one and then make substitutions that are appropriate where I see fit. So start with this uh, coupling capacitor on the volume control. Alright, so we're ready to try this thing out. Uh, do a basic, very slow ramp up on the voltage. I just now realized that the original 6X5 rectifier has been replaced with the more modern 6AX5, which is a better internal design. I think you can also use like um, the 6AR4 or something. There's some slightly newer rectifier designs that have the same pinout, but better ratings and construction, and the 6AR5 is one of those, or 6AX5, so that's good. And the filament of the 6AX5 is actually tied to the number 47 pilot lamps on either side of the dial. So we're going to use those to see how things are doing. And I've got my uh, fluke here on the high voltage lead off of the rectifier tube to keep an eye on the B+. So we're going to go ahead, flip the switch, and then, uh, oh yeah, hit the power switch as well. Turn the volume up a little bit. That's on broadcast. And we're going to gently bring this up. I'm not seeing anything out of the dial lamps yet, although they may very well be burnt out. Take a look and see if we got anything on those right now. Yes, we do. We have uh, about five volts on the lamps, so film and voltage to the rectifier is good. Let's go back checking the DC output. We are up to 240 volts on the B+. Let's check the speaker. Not hearing anything, let's gently go ahead. Bring this the rest of the way up. Alright, we're seeing 326 on B+. And we've got some crackling of the speaker there. Our 6v6 output tube is warming up.
Well, I'm not quite getting anything. Oh, I know exactly why that is, because I haven't bridged the connection for the audio. So we're not getting anything through there, so let me grab a jumper wire and fix that. audio path I should have realized uh, let's see let's see that uh, wonderful noise we're getting there yeah Ah, there's a station I recognize. Very faint. Let's try going this way. Oh. And at one point it had more Twitter followers than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Imagine that. How about that? Shane Torres with us, comedian. He's at Helium Comedy Club. Tonight, 7.30 and 10. Tomorrow night, 7.30 and 10. HeliumComedy.com for tickets. Uh, take us back to sort of the first time that you thought, hey, I could do that. When was that? Oh. I, I, I guess like yeah. here. I was obsessed with it when I was younger, but where yeah. I grew up in Fort Worth, there wasn't really a place to... Yes. Yeah. So. He manipulated for your first. But to treat him as a person with his own... An ultrasound guided abortion. And when she was in the room, she witnessed for the from volunteer. I wish that Jesus Christ is the funniest people I've ever AM band seems to be working okay, even with the filter caps not yet replaced. Probably got a little bit of alignment to do there. That's going to be fun without the proper <laughs> proper guide for this, but I can guess that the pattern capacitors in this area here are probably for tracking. Or, uh, no, actually, because this is the local oscillator coil. The, yeah, these are going to be the local oscillator adjust. That's going to affect the... Uh, Keep an eye on my B plus here. I don't want that filter cap to blow up on me. Wait, tel tone control definitely does something. Let's switch over to shortwave and see if there's anything there. I highly doubt it. Yeah, so in, in this set, the shortwave... test that I want to do. That is to connect an external audio source. Let's go ahead and rig up something really quickly here for my iPhone. And since this is our audio input. We will couple that there. And I've got my adapter on the other end. 
let's see what we get. Obviously things are going to be a bit better once the filter caps are, are new, but as a preliminary test result I'd say this is working pretty good. Let's try to find something that's not copywritten or that YouTube won't care about anyway. How about... Yeah, here we go. Wait for the ad to finish. say that's a pretty successful test there. That means an audio signal injected right at the volume control there will work fantastic. Um, I might still use a switch. Unfortunately the uh, wafer switch for this here appears to be connected to the antenna and I don't think that trying to inject it at the switch is going to work because that's part of the local oscillator circuit and it's putting an audio signal there is not going to help anything. So let's carefully remove this without touching the rectifier tube socket. Not a good place to put your fingers when this thing's fired up. And uh, yeah. Easy peasy. Rectifier and all the other tubes are obviously good. We got a uh, nice clear audio output, but of course we are still going to replace the filter caps. Kind of have to, because if they're any kind of leaky, and I guarantee they are, they will eventually either fail open circuit or short circuit. So I'm going to give the canister a quick feel, because if they are bad, they will be slightly warm. Huh? cold as ice. Well, regardless of how good or bad those may be, it's not worth risking the uh, tr power transformer and all that. Oh, would you look at that? I missed a wax capacitor on the top of the set. Silly me. There is one hidden. Let me get the uh, chassis in the right position here. There's one hidden just underneath the tuning capacitor. That uh, brown cylinder right there that's connected to the coil there. Gonna have to replace that one. Well, kudos to whoever did the, uh, the, the parts replacements. It's not as bad as it could have been. The antenna obviously works. So, um, I would still like to try to remount it to the chassis the way it was. That would be uh, preferable. But if I can't, that's understandable. I'm not sure if the bracket is original to the set or not. I would hope it is. It looks like they just took the original bracket and bent it slightly. But they've taken this pattern right here and moved it. And I don't know where it was originally. So that's, that's a bit annoying. So I may be stuck um, keeping the antenna where it is internally. It's not going to hurt anything. It still works okay. Although the uh, this grounding assembly that they've 
come up with here is I have no idea what's going on with that. Um, apparently the uh, <laughs> tuning condenser assembly isn't properly grounded or something, so they felt the need to do that, despite there being a giant ground strap hooking that up. It's kind of weird. I'll go ahead and uh, get the can of air out and blast more of the crud off of this and then go around with a, uh, some paper towels and everything and try to clean most of the grime off of it. And then I'll check and see if I have any number 47 bulbs. I want to say I do. But, uh, in the meantime, that was all out of frame, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. That sucks. I'll go ahead and clean stuff up. I'll look at replacing that. And then, uh, oh yes, we'll look at replacing the power cord as well. Now, this socket down here for the record player, I might try to find a replacement for that because it's not in good shape. The insulators have started to break away. So I'll definitely want to look at uh, either replacing this socket or what I can do is use a, uh, find a female cord end to plug the phonograph's male end into for simplicity's sake. And then there's some of this antenna wiring that is a little uh, frayed there, and I'd like to fix that. But overall, seems to be working fantastic.